Good luck. All right, so um, what shall we play today? Let's go back and play an old favorite. Um, let's decline this bishop exchange because I don't feel like going there right now. Yeah, I think we all here are enjoying our camaraderie, so I'm not disabling chat this time. I normally do, but we have such a per so many folks that are interested in chatting that I don't want to stifle the conversation. Um, actually, you know, I should tap away from it. So now I'm not looking at it. Y'all behave because I've got moderation bot and it blocks links and hopefully does a decent job moderating. Um, so yeah, we'll look away at least until this game concludes. Um... That's interesting. Let me boost my volume back to 100% since we're not doing Shogi Wars. I want to open the line for my Rook. If I do not capture, she will. So I capture and I promote. I think I have time to make such a move. Oh, the silver covers this point. I was going to push this pawn. Maybe I still do push it. I know I like my drama. Um, I haven't castled. I need to complete this castle. Then I have time to push this.
これより秒読みに入ります10秒20秒1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10秒20秒20秒1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 Perhaps a lighter defense was possible. Jupio. これより秒読みに入ります10秒10秒20秒1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10秒。
10秒。二十秒一二三四五六七。Oh. じゅうびょう。I'm just having trouble visualizing this. Jupio. Jupio. 20秒1 This just got a lot easier. 10秒。
Right, but there's that. Jupio 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 Nijubio Jupio Nijubio Jupio Nijubio Jupio Nijubio
10秒。10秒20秒1234秒10秒10秒20秒1234秒10十秒。20秒1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10秒。10秒20秒10秒10秒20秒10秒20秒10秒。20秒1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 
10秒。10秒。10秒20秒1234567891秒10秒20秒12345610秒。10秒。10秒10秒。20秒123310秒。Thanks for the game. I promise I wasn't bullying. I was just really terrified because I have 30 second Bioyo me. I apologize if that offended anybody, but 30 second Bioyo me is something that makes me struggle a bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks uh, for this game. So, yeah, I was aiming to get my king into the upper left corner, and Lily put up many good defenses to try to stop me from getting there. Um, I guess I could do a brief uh, review of the game here. Even though this is 5 minute with 30 second BIO, maybe we could briefly go over it. There was, yeah, first of all, um, here, I don't know if what I should have been doing here. 
in similar positions I've taken here. Um, but on account of playing against Lily here, I was afraid of doing the thing I've normally done. Um, even though it, it seems reasonable, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I was just surprised. Anyhow, so once these rooks are opposed, now it seems that I'm forced to exchange one way or another. I don't know whether I should take here or make things more complicated with this. I think I should probably just exchange on this seventh file rather than hope for like this diagonal to open. I don't know. This gets complicated because I've not completed my castle. If eventually my king does step over, there will be a bishop fork here. So this might not be a good time to open this diagonal. I think in general, the bishop exchange normally does favor Ibisha, the static rook player. However, uh, in this case, yeah, with all these pieces swarming this direction, and with me having completed Mino Castle, this is really the time for me to try to make things complicated. So my feeling was that this is appropriate, even if in general a bishop exchange favors Ibisha. One tempo was spent on this, and I have a complete castle, and I am playing Senta, so I thought I could get away with this. I thought it was a reasonable move. Um, so, yeah, I built up an initiative based on getting this knight, and this quickly uh, escalated out of hand. Here, as the time was ticking, I tried to figure out, like, can I just simply move my silver here? Or is there some tactic that invalidates this idea? And I thought I saw something toward the end, like the last few seconds of my um, the Biyomi counter on this that suggested, like, here there might be this kind of idea with this breaking in. So that's why I solidified my position. But, um, yeah, this is cowardly. On the other hand, I did collect a knight and a lance, so I might as well play a little bit scared while the timer's ticking. And then, yeah, after this, I thought this is a reasonable way to activate my horse. Um, alternatively, during the game, I was thinking, like, do I go here or there or here? Each of which has advantages and disadvantages. Really, I would like to attack this point here, and any of these moves would in one way... Well, the direct retreat back this way wouldn't help with that, but um, moving down or sideways would contribute towards some sort of attack, which hits toward the castle. But I don't know. I guess if I go down, I can start to push the center pawn and hope things tactically work out for me here. I was confused. So anyway, I went pawn chasing, and I didn't think this would happen. Um, it's an aggressive move. We do like aggressive moves, and I fully... Like, it's the sort of thing that I would play, but it's risky. Yes, my horse is in the corner. Maybe I need to defend more accurately than I did. There's probably something I have here. I just don't see what. For example, maybe I have this horse, this knight, and some kind of pawn drop somewhere around here. And in addition to hitting the gold, we'd be hitting this, hitting that. Maybe. But, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have gone pawn hunting in the first place if I wasn't comfortable with this. Um, so, also I'm trying to defer this, or deter this, or whatever. So, yeah, I have to fight back. Thankfully I have the forces to do it. Uh, so there goes a pawn, and then, yeah, this bishop is beautifully placed, so we have to kick it. And tactics get... oh! <laughs> It's a good thing I didn't play my first thought. My first thought was this, um, with the idea that I would promote on one of these squares. 
Uh, yeah, in time pressure, I just missed that this is like defended twice. So it's a good thing I didn't go with my first thought there. Um, I don't know about this one. Maybe a case could be made for this. And now if Rook takes now, maybe something like this? I don't know. I, during the game, I'd also started looking at sequences like this sacrifice. And uh, how does this work out? I didn't solve this in time pressure, but this looked potentially interesting. Um, it would be even more interesting if I had a fork here. But yeah, I couldn't figure that out. Instead, I try to protect my bishop. I think this retreat is most unfortunate. Um, yeah, it does activate the rook in this direction, uh, but it really provokes that which follows, and that which follows isn't necessarily good. So yeah, I can kick this silver without reprisal, and here... Actually, did I mess up here? Did I miss something? I probably missed this. And, I mean, it's similar, but here there's... Oh, they can't do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, this would have been good. I think. So, here I just win a piece for nothing. Or successfully end up exchanging rooks, I think, because say that a rook exchange gets declined, I mean, what are you going to do? We end up back where we are upon richer. So this would have been a nice, nice tactic that, anyway, it's not what happened in the game. I saw, I debated this bishop fork and then thought, well, my everything is hanging after I do that. Let's offer this exchange first. Oh, I expect a pawn drop, but pawn drop's illegal. Okay, so yes, the lance drop is quite reasonable. Um, bishop drop prevents me from doing the same bishop drop. And while I was a bit miffed to see it, um, I had a good enough response. And things just uh, roller coastered from here. So, yeah, things very quickly escalated. This knight sack, while a good idea, wasn't enough to save the game. And, yeah, it's just extremely difficult to make recommendations for Gota in this position. Um, okay, that's an interesting thought. I'd been in time pressure for 30 moves by now. I was not fully thinking rationally at this point. Um, King 1-8 were suggesting, or Melkor has suggested. Yeah, this typically gets played in similar situations. And yes, I, the more I think about this, Melkor is probably correct. So after this, I think I have to remove the knight, or be sensible to remove the knight. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, taking the knight seems sensible enough. And what am I so afraid of? So, okay, if they don't take my bishop for free... Oh, they still don't have a mate threat. Oh my goodness. Wow. The bishop's hanging, the knight is hanging, and this pawn can't move twice, and even if it could move twice, I'd still be okay. So, yeah, somehow I just had, like, the worst possible nightmare of giving a bishop with loss of tempo while also they have another general in hand and the edge file opens up at the same time. Somehow in time pressure, I recalled all of these times put together that I've played King 1-8 and things have gone horribly wrong. Here, this is a situation where King 1-8 can be safely played. Like, 
there's nothing for me to be terrified of here. All these pawns prevent pawn drops right next to my castle. This edge is not breaking this turn, and even if it did break this turn, I still have a knight covering this square. There is no general in hand, there is no bishop or rook in hand, and even if things exchange, I have some time to get my king out of here while things exchange, but exchanges are not going to quickly occur. Meanwhile, I have devastating attacks, so I don't know what I was so scared of. Other than, um, yeah, if Lily plays very aggressively and her attacks are very strong, so I, I get that I'm afraid of that, but uh, in this particular position, yeah, there, it was not necessary for me to expose my king this way. When I did expose my king this way, thankfully I struck upon this. Oh, wait, I deliberated, do I play the rook back? And I decided against it, thinking that this was a legal response. It's not legal. So since this would be an illegal pawn drop, maybe dragon... 8-1 would have been slightly better than Dragon 7-2. Uh, although this did set up a tactic that worked decently well in the game. Um, where I got both bishops and yeah, things just very quickly got out of hand. Uh, toward the end, I'm still searching for a checkmate. I think this bishop move is the beginning of a sequence. And it just falls to me to find the rest of the sequence here. Um, and not embarrass myself too badly. I was thinking this check, king retreats, this, takes, this, or something like that. So, okay, and then the king goes somewhere like here. I have enough generals to be able to do this sort of thing, but there's almost certainly something cleaner that I've missed. Uh, but yeah, I think there's definitely a checkmate from here. It's not even he, she. This is like there's going to be a forced mate. Did I have a faster forced mate elsewhere? I don't know, but yeah, I think this does force mate swiftly enough. Um, so, now Lily is a very, very strong player, knows uh, openings quite well, and can play the middle games and end games quite fiercely too. You have to have some combination of all of that to reach 3 Don. Um, and while on Shogi Wars, I get really carried away. I do take these games on 81 Dojo seriously, even though this is an unrated tournament. I'm not caring for the rating points. It's because I think 81 Dojo provides an atmosphere where you're capable of playing games and getting emotionally invested in them uh, in a way that you don't have that same sort of investment when you're playing on the other site. Uh, so, yeah, Shogi Explained says the act for Journey Step on how to beat Lily once. And Shogi Explain says that Journey Step said that if you can get Lily into a position where the best move is to not attack, she overplays. That's unfortunate. Um, but no, I mean, I do the same thing on Shogi Wars where I overplay a ridiculous amount. Um, I reel it in when I'm playing an 81 Dojo. But it's really hard to do that, especially with the timer ticking. Um, Melkor says there's a pawn drop that I could have just captured somewhere. Let's see if I can spot it. I'll look for a pawn drop. Where is the pawn drop that I could have captured? Was it this pawn drop? No, that was a pawn move. Let's see if we can find the pawn drop. I don't know. Maybe you're referring to a different game altogether, too. I shouldn't spend all day looking for that. Uh, anyway, 
Yeah, everybody has a weakness and a strength, and it's up to us to build a community where we can learn to help and support each other. So that's a, yeah, I'm not at all trying to make fun of any opponent, or I know, like, I took all their pieces because I was afraid, but, um, yeah, no, I think it's important to play respectfully. I hope the way that I played was respectful. And I still am going to work on doing delivering Suma better and better. Uh, Hidechi recommends that you analyze a game from the front to the end and not fixate on the particular end game phase of a single game. Uh, I guess because otherwise you might not get to reviewing the rest of the game. You want to make sure you review the whole game. It's well known by many players and coaches that you want to practice uh, end game puzzles. So, end game puzzles, uh, Suma Shogi, are a great way to learn to checkmate better in the end game. So, once you understand Suma Shogi a bit better, then you can look at positions more like this and figure out okay, is this bishop drop the right way to go? Should I drop the knight? Should I move my dragon back here? Is there some other plan of attack that I should be doing? So once you are familiar with checkmate patterns, um, for example, uh, so I'm going to, instead of this bishop drop, let's, oh, they finally, okay, she promotes this pawn. So uh, ignoring for the fact there might be some fork somewhere, let's say that a move is lost. So once you know patterns, you know that you can do things like this. And then this gets taken. And then you can sack a piece over here. And the king takes it. And then like, you capture from behind. And like you've exploded the castle. The king's not running away anywhere. You can look for ideas more like that earlier and earlier in the game. If you know like how safe your king is and how safe your opponent's king is, you can play more aggressively. Uh, without risk, or with lower risk. Uh, transport disagrees with Hidechi's recommendation. And it's fine to, like, disagree. Um, but, yeah. Whole game analysis can be useful if you have time to do it. This is point. Uh, Melkor recommends we look at move 112. Let's take a quick look at that. So here we are. Move 112 is this pawn drop. Okay. Yes, I could have simply captured this. Oh, yes, that would make sense. This did cross my mind for one second out of the 30 seconds or so. I don't remember if this is a position I moved quickly on. I needed to pace myself better than I did because I played quickly some moves and took my time other moves. This messed with my brain. And yeah, the, you see errors like this crop up because I'm not focused. And note that if this happens, that's also free. So there is no fork here. There's no tactic. Yeah, and meanwhile we have this pin that's just crushing. So it helps to spot these sorts of tactics too. Uh, if you're not tactically alert... Uh, mistakes can creep in, and yeah, if I had played this way, we wouldn't have seen that uh, end game that we saw. Thankfully, this is 112. The game concluded on 132, but uh, yeah, it should have concluded in a cleaner way. And Melkor correctly points out what I simply did not evaluate correctly when I thought the gold could move over and attack both bishops, and I was just freaking out. But yeah, pace yourself when you're playing. Do as I say, not as I do, etc., etc. Hopefully we enjoyed this game and the post-game analysis and it gives us some food for thought. Hopefully as a community we can uh, find constructive criticism and learn together.